Years ago, uh, I had a, or I still have a good, very good friend who was a priest at one of the big churches in Jackson, Mississippi, and on Easter morning, he stood up in front of a packed church, ready to deliver a sermon, and some people were leaning forward, and others were trying to quiet children, and some were probably reading through the prayer book, but they got his, he got their attention because he stood there and he said, it's all true. And then he turned around and came down off the pulpit just like this and walked away. I'm not that bold. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but it's sort of legend now in the Diocese of Mississippi that he would do that. And, it was, and it's true. It, it is all true. In some ways, those three words are sort of all that you need to hear because you can read the story and we know it in our own lives. I wonder if those of us who have experienced the risen Christ in our lives, whether through family or friends, kindnesses shown to us, small miracles in our own lives that have changed our trajectory for something good, the times that we have been Jesus to other people, what would it be like if we went or zapped back to that tomb with Mary Magdalene and the other Mary? What would we tell them about what they had in store for them and how we would say to them, it's really true, he is risen, he is. As it is, however, um, they're forlorn as they walk to the tomb. They're expecting to just check on it. Um, not quite sure what they're going to see, but they, they don't, even though Jesus has told them the story, they don't quite believe it. And so they're trudging and they're downcast because their teacher, their friend, this rabbi, their Messiah, the Savior is no longer living. And as they get to the tomb, this supernatural event occurs only in the Gospel of Matthew where this earthquake comes and shakes the earth. And when, the, when things clear, there's the angel sitting on the rock. The guards are terrified. Mary and Magdalene and Mary are scared. But the angel says to the two women, don't be afraid. He's not here. He is risen. And he didn't say, do not be afraid as a reproach. He was saying it in assurance. See? It's true. It is true. He's risen. We hear the words fear and joy in this gospel text sort of in tandem, and we hear them several times throughout the whole thing. And I, and I think it's true that fear and joy sometimes go together in our lives. They, they come one after the other in some certain situations, so they're not opposite. Sometimes they just accompany one another. When we're fearful of something sometimes and things turned out better than we expect and there's great joy. Or when we're joyful and then something changes, there's fear. We prefer the first one. But they do, they do go together and they're really important in this text because we see that the emotions, the fear, the sadness, and then the joy accompany them. We, we, know it's, we know it's true. If it weren't true, and this is what I would want to tell Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, whom we think is uh, Jesus' mother, I would tell them that uh, this church that your, your teacher began and began proclaiming the good news, making promises about eternal life, that everything and all, everyone are equal before God, the truth is that this church, not just St. Stephen's, but the Christian church around the world wouldn't still exist if it weren't true. Because you can't build upon something that has no sure foundation. And our foundation, of course, is the risen, resurrected Jesus Christ in our world. So when we look at the story and we see what Mary Magdalene and Mary were thinking, and then once the angel said, you're going to see him on the way, go. Go back and tell your brothers and sisters. And they started running. And you can just imagine what their emotions were. Maybe they were running crooked. Maybe they were trying to talk to each other while they were walking because they just can't believe it. And then all of a sudden, even more supernatural to them in some ways, there is Jesus. There is this teacher that they've been following for all of these months and, sometime, and for some of them years. And he stands before them and says, greetings. 
it's me, it's true. Go back and tell the rest. It's a stunning story for all of us who sit in this church year after year, decade after decade, and the, the, the story never really gets old, or at least it doesn't for me. Every time I see it, every year I think, God, it's really true. <laughs> I've been privileged to experience the risen Christ in my own life with people in this church already, people from my, where, I, where I grew up, the people that have t ministered to me, intended to me, and given me things that have helped change my own life because of their kindness and their honor and their faith. I know that if we all sat here long enough, we would know who the Jesus in our lives has been as well because we all have been touched by this Jesus who promised us everything. So for the story more than or about 2,000 years ago and for our lives today here in this space, sitting with family and friends and people that we know and people that we don't know, but all of us here to be reminded once more that Jesus Christ is risen today and it's all true. Thanks be to God for that. Amen.